So season four, I finally got onto it again after doing my rewatch, and um, I remember a lot of commentary when it initially came out, and even years after it continues. And that's how the giant mecha that Kuvira has is apparently the dumbest thing that could have been introduced. Um, and so this is my video to basically come out to say that the giant mecha really wasn't that bad. Okay, so I will admit, I'm not the best at history, I don't really understand technology, so all of this is sort of just like a splur of thoughts and some basics of how technology and technological and industrial revolutions work, so please don't take anything that I say as fact. If you want more understanding of uh, the industrial changes from Ang to Cora, I recommend Hello Future Me's video, which I'll card here, uh, talking about in the industrial sort of revolution side of stuff, but uh, just putting that out there so no one like comes at me in the comments for being factually inaccurate. But it, <laughs> with that said, here's some discussions to do with industrial revolutions. Legend of Korra was amid huge industrial revolutionary changes and Kuvira's time was definitely one of them. We will continue to see throughout the whole seasons of Korra how war and crime and industry was consistently and constantly changing from one season to the next and that was something that was happening even in comparison to our times. After wars things do rapidly change and continue to for a long period of time. Even in our most recent decades, the technological, I can't say that word, the technological revolution that we've had in the last two decades of like, I remember when I had a flip phone and now I have like a smartphone and that's within a decade for me really. I think my first iPhone I got was when I was how old am I now? But even that, like, over the last two decades here in our time, things have changed drastically with technology. The same can be said for Cora's time. Things have changed a lot since the Avatar series, and the same happens with the three years from book three to book four. We have seen mecha tanks, we have seen what they've done, we have seen how platinum has been used to the advantage and disadvantage against and with metal vendors. So the fact that there is one that has been made and is basically a super weapon and take into account that obviously in our history we've had things like nuclear weapons continue to be adapted to the point that in comparison to the bombs that were used in World War II, they are drastically more dangerous now than they were then. Things are consistently evolving from how people continue to use things to their advantage to get an advantage over other people. And in the fact that Kuvira was an incredibly charismatic leader who happened to get some of the greatest and brightest minds of their generation, Batar Jr, Zhu Li, Varric, and lots of others as well. There is another one that's mentioned that has this mind control element based on what the Dai Li were doing, but actually worse, <laughs> somehow, I can't remember his name, but it's in Ruins of the Empire. But the fact that she was able to cultivate these minds and get their minds to create these things that are drastically evil and incredible in their design at the same time isn't too far off what we have actually seen in our history. Many people note that the giant mecha just seems like it came out of nowhere, but as we know, Kuvira has been cultivating her leadership and her role with these bright minds for at least two to three three years. So it's possible she was having these plans already in place. We can see that she is enjoying this limelight of power and being able to bring structure and diplomacy to the Earth Kingdom. So I wouldn't be surprised if these plans were already in the works. We see how far along they were already were when we're checking in here and there with the Spirit Vine weapon. That's clearly already been in progress for a long period of time before even the giant mecha comes, well, that we know of, comes into discussion. That's something that they were clearly planning for a long period of time, if Varric was able to test it regularly and cultivate his understanding of this technology. 
But we see something very similar happening in Avatar as well. And especially also in Legend of Korra, like we have moments where different technology from Hiroshi Sato is continuing to be cultivated because he has the funds and the support. But the Fire Nation had the exact same thing. They had the finances to cultivate new technology, like the drill that we see in book two, like the, I can't remember what they're called. I don't know if they had a name the wall crawling tanks that they had they, they have so many things that the fire nation had that they kept bringing out like also using geniuses like the mechanic inventor guy i don't think we ever get his name but the fact that they have cultivated these relationships through fear in a lot of cases same as kuvira these things continue to happen we have the airships in avatar those airships turn into planes in Korra it's continuing to build this evolutionary and industrial change. So the giant mecha, yes, okay, it is a little bit ridiculous with how huge it is. I will give people that. But considering mechas had been around since book one, considering that they continue to change and adapt over the years, the technology regularly changing, like they look different in different ways throughout the seasons, the mecha tanks. And the fact that things are continuing to change, like we get, films, we get speedboats, we get so many different things from Varric. It's kind of not hard to, you know, deduce that having incredible minds under your control, being able to have that power for many years, use that power to your advantage and use the technology and finances that you have at your disposal, that something as insane and powerful as a giant mecha tank suit that has this ultimate weapon could have been done and cultivated within this environment same as the drill the airships the tanks that they have all these things that the fire nation had is sort of reflected in a sense of what kuvira has as well we just aren't as accepting of it because it is technically also a giant robot <laughs> I don't know if anything of what I've just said makes sense, but um, yeah, the mecha tank, honestly, I'm not too fussed with it. I had problems with it initially, but mainly because the internet told me I should. Same with book two. I had a lot of issues with book two, but I didn't have them before I started seeing everyone else's complaints about book two. And don't worry, I'm getting to a video about the whole of book two soon. But yeah, what do you guys think? Did you really think that the mecha tank was as bad as a lot of people have made it out to be or do you think it just it felt like it came out of the blue but you're not really too fussy about it whatever the case let me know in this in the comment section down below can you tell that i've had a long day can you i can <sighs> all the same i want to thank you guys so much for watching this video i truly do appreciate it in the description box you'll find the links to all of my social media my merchandise store and my patreon where if you want to support me that is the place to do so can't support me financially hit the subscribe button and the notification bell drop a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you want to and share this video with your friends i would truly appreciate it but as always yes thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys next time away oh, hey.